Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 583. On one occasion I saw Jesus thirsting and fainting, and he said to me, I thirst. When I gave him water, he took it, but he did not drink and immediately disappeared. He was clothed as he was during his passion. When you reflect upon what I tell you in the depths of your heart, you profit more than if you had read many books. Oh, if souls would only want to listen to my voice when I am speaking in the depths of their hearts, they would reach the peak of holiness in a short time. January 8, 1936 When I went to see the Archbishop Yalbjakovsky, I told him that Jesus was asking that I pray for God's mercy upon the world and that there be a religious congregation which would entreat the mercy of God for the world. I asked his permission for all the Lord Jesus was demanding of me. The Archbishop answered me in these words, As for prayer, I give my permission and even encourage you, sister, to pray as much as possible for the world and to beg God's mercy, as mercy is what we all need. And I presume that your confessor certainly does not forbid you to pray for this intention. But as regards this congregation, wait a while, sister, so that all things may arrange themselves more favorably. This thing is good in itself, but there is no need to hurry. If it is God's will, it will be done, whether it be a little sooner or a little later. Why shouldn't it be? There are so many different kinds of congregations. This one, too, will come to be if God so wills. Be completely at peace. The Lord Jesus can do all things. Strive for a close union with God and do not lose heart. These words filled me with great joy. When I left the Archbishop's house, I heard the following words in my soul. To confirm your soul, I speak through my representatives in accordance with what I demand of you, but know that this will not always be so. They will oppose you in many things, and through this my grace will be manifest in you, and it will be evident that this matter is my doing. But as for you, fear nothing. I am always with you, and know this too, my daughter, all creatures, whether they know it or not, and whether they want to or not, always fulfill my will. Once I suddenly saw Jesus in great majesty, and he spoke these words to me. My daughter, if you wish, I will this instant create a new world, more beautiful than this one, and you will live there for the rest of your life. I answered, I don't want any worlds. I want you, Jesus. I want to love you with the same love that you have for me. I beg you for only one thing, to make my heart capable of loving you. I am very much surprised at your offer, my Jesus. What are these worlds to me? Even if you gave me a thousand of them, what are they to me? You know very well, Jesus, that my heart is dying of longing for you. Everything that is not you is nothing to me. At that moment, I could no longer see anything, but a strange force took over my soul. A strange fire sprang up in my heart, and I entered into a kind of agony for him. Then I heard these words, With no other souls do I unite myself as closely and in such a way as I do with you, and this because of the deep humility and ardent love which you have for me. On one occasion I heard these words within me, Every movement of your heart is known to me. Know, my daughter, that one glance of yours directed at someone else would wound me more than many sins committed by another person. Love 
casts out fear. Since I came to love God with my whole being and with all the strength of my heart, fear has left me. Even if I were to hear the most terrifying things about God's justice, I would not fear him at all, because I have come to know him well. God is love, and his spirit is peace. I see now that my deeds, which have flowed from love, are more perfect than those which I have done out of fear. I have placed my trust in God and fear nothing. I have given myself over to his holy will. Let him do with me as he wishes, and I will still love him. Here, Jesus did not drink the water St. Faustina gave him when he said that he was thirsty when she saw him in the midst of his passion. He took it and he disappeared, probably because his thirst was for love and for souls to respond to him. Jesus tells Faustina how important it is that we listen to him when he speaks in the depths of our hearts. He wants to help us to grow. St. Faustina told the Archbishop about Jesus' request for a new congregation, and he confirmed what Father Andras had told her. Be at peace, take your time. If it is God's will, it will come to pass in God's time. His words filled her with joy. Jesus then told her that he speaks through his representatives to confirm her spirit, to reassure her. But he says sometimes his representatives, superiors and confessors, will oppose her. But in the end, Jesus' will will be done. All people help to fulfill the will of God because he can bring good out of everything, the good and the bad, the challenges that we face and the consolations. Jesus offers to create a new world for Faustina if she wishes, but she refuses. She wants nothing but Jesus. And Jesus is very pleased with her humility and with her burning love for him. Jesus tells Faustina to keep her heart united to his and to not allow her heart to be divided in any way. Faustina writes that love casts out fear. Trusting in God leaves no room for fear. So no matter what happens in her life, she promises to love God through it all.